This is just an introductory talk to the forthcoming surgical uh, talks on proximal humerus fractures. Uh, a, a very brief, what are we talking about really? So, you know, most of us are doing trauma surgery, then we see ID fractures and, and, you know, if it's minimally displaced, significantly displaced, but we know at least that this is a surgical thing and uh, no brainer, most of us want to do surgeries here. And then if you see neck femur fractures, then again, no brainer, displaced, not displaced minimally displaced but again we know it's a surgical thing but can we have the same emotions about uh, a proximal humerus fracture whether it is displaced minimally displaced what kind of emotion do you have what kind of decision making are you doing for example let's say what where i where i classify these fractures now broadly the, uh, just to decide on surgical or non surgical some of the fractures are significantly displaced more than 90 to 100% displacement there's no contact then there is some which are non-displaced or minimally displaced, okay? And then the ones that do not confine in these two groups are the ones displaced between these two, moderately displaced, or you, you want to call it whatever you want to call it. For example, let's say this fracture, no-brainer, everybody knows it's a significantly displaced, it's like 100% uh, dislocated fracture, head is dislocated, you are going to go and do something to it, it's not going to be conserved. No, but let's see this fracture, now this, this was a 60, three-year-old gentleman and uh, I don't have the first x-ray but this he, he got an x-ray at three weeks I don't get x-rays at three weeks but he got this x-ray at three weeks and it had gone into a little virus there was a little space opening up now at three weeks or uh, even at the first go how many would have operated this fracture would you 63 yeah so how many would do a philos or uh, or just do a pinning or, or J nail or, or whatever you want kind of scenario <laughs> or, or any other surgery? Why is not to do? When you have that immobile spike going into the head, it is stable. That x-ray that you showed. It is not like an IT fracture in this case. So therefore, it's not like, yeah, it's, it's going to a little virus. Yeah, but for a 63 AC wishes that he doesn't want to get operated. Okay. What if he wants to get operated? No, then I would put K wires. <laughs> K wires, sir. K wires. K wires. Like a minimal That's invasive a thing, right? So Sorry? Minimally invasive something. Yeah, Okay. Would you want to correct the virus or, or in this case? There is actually not much of a void there. Yeah. Uh, once you try to correct, that void will be created, that big yeah. circle. Right. And then you will have problems. <laughs> Let it remain like that only okay. if you are not yeah. doing anything. Correct. Otherwise, yeah, there. So three months, it healed like uh, this? Yeah, it healed. That's fine. Okay, this is three months. Okay. And he came back at four, uh, around three, between three and four months. And of course, you know, he had full range of movements. No, no, this is of course elevation. Scapula is compensating for that. 180 degrees. I didn't check abduction. I don't check, usually I don't check abduction. It's usually there. If you have full flexion, abduction is usually there. And if you, are, and if you have full external rotation, So that is there. Uh, there is no. There will be some restriction of abduction. Okay. If you have full flexion, but you have okay. external rotation. It's fine. Conserve. Yeah. Okay. No, no. This is this is a 63 year old guy. He does not look like an athlete. This is a 63 year old guy. This is not. Yeah, young guy. Young guy. You are making a point in a young guy. Yeah, yeah. You can play. You can play. Yes. No, of course. Abduction. Yeah, he also. External rotation. Yeah. Which will not get it. Oh, but after doing a plating, you think you will get, he'll get it? Yes. Sir, it is his left upper He is left handed one. Choice Choice of the patient. You think if he wanted surgical, you would do surgical? But conservative, three months, he can get this movements back. But this is a borderline case. You can conserve as well as operate as a case.
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, he's 63, non-dominant hand, non-dominant yeah. arm, smoker, uh, do we know? Yeah, non-smoker. Right? Non-smoker, he's working, not working, uh, he was just retired. He sedentary worker. Yeah, not so non-dominant hand, 63-year-old. Uh, he's got, yeah, he's got some mild varus, but we know the shoulder can compensate for single line of varus. And the, the problem is, you know, you could pin this in sight too. You're not gonna get this, I don't think, very easily reduced, um, closed. You may be able to do something with it. If you open it, and you try and crank it down, you know, that spike, it really impales on that. And it's very hard to pull it back down, and then you end up with sort of a more of an unstable, Correct. unstable uh, fracture configuration, which you're relying completely on the plate to do all the work. Right. You know, unless you, go, unless you go immediately, right. unless you go immediately and put some support there or, or yeah. so I, I mean, I think that, you know, it, for me, for me anyway, for this 63-year-old gentleman, low, low demand, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer it. Okay, so now this is not very clear, but this was significantly displaced. This is a valgus impact. Yeah, this is valgus. The GT is displaced upwards. That's the humerus head. That's the GT. Now she came to me after one year, uh, but this has healed in varus. It all healed back. And she, of course, had refused surgery. Uh, she came from somewhere else. But, uh, you know, so these are the videos that I have. I'm showing only the videos that I have. She went for flexion till 100, 110 or something. Okay, but this is after one year. Now, this does confirm with what literature says that if you have an elderly patient, non-operative is equal to internal fixation. Uh, this paper, uh, the range of movement, forward flexion. So most of the papers report for forward flexion. So I always, you know, do the forward flexion assessment, external rotation, abduction, not much. I don't assess that, but because this is this is reported as such. So range of movement, 120, 110, you don't get more than that. This is the average that you get in an elderly patient. So, uh, and then they said that there was one non-union in conservative group and three AVNs in ORIF. So there was more re-operation rate with the ORIF. So now, yeah. That paper, though, that paper, so the patient um, quality of life measures were better. Well, better, in, in better, hemiarthroplasty. Right. So the quality of measure life was better in hemiarthroplasty in this paper. Ty yeah, that was the paper, other right? paper. This was the internal fixation. That was the oh, one that was hemi. That was hemi. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. no, I, I, I see what you mean. That was right. the paper with hemi and non. Right. Yeah, right, right, and right. The hemi had better quality of life. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this was the ORI. Now this, this patient. Now uh, this was also around 60 years old, and uh, she presented with this X-ray. Would you op operate? How many will operate this fracture? So many will operate this fracture. This looks a little displaced. No, this is a fresh fracture. It was around 60 years. It's a patient, 60 years patient. So fresh fracture. Okay. Yeah. So this is one view, and this one second. So this is, this is another patient. Would you operate on this? No. This is another patient taken on a C arm. Yeah. Operatively. Correct. So you have decided to operate. <laughs> <laughs> That's so the point. You, any, all these patients, so these if you put on a C arm in traction, they reduce. Yeah, so these so are that's both the same main aim. Huh. These are both the same patients. Yeah, of course, they will reduce. Yeah. But so how will you maintain the reduction? That's the point. In splinting. So. Yeah, but if you want to uh, have this plate. type of a reduction, you have to plate it, no? Correct, correct, yeah. No, no, you can plate it, of course, and you know, we realized that when we did the C arm, it's already reduced. So, you know, but decision of surgery cannot be based on one x-ray at one point of time, you don't know it was a standing x-ray, you, you don't know it was a supine x-ray. So you look at one x-ray, little display, then you, you are jumping onto surgery. I think we should just wait, do a different x-ray, see, maybe it's undisplaced before taking him to surgery. Now you're already taking him to surgery, okay. Anyway, so this this patient, I, I got a call, I got an x-ray on WhatsApp, I asked Dr. Hassan if you remember, this 78 year old, okay. This fracture, very fresh fracture, 78 year old. What would you do? Significant, this displaced. Will you operate? Who will operate this? you will land in trouble. Better So I went and saw him. He had no pain from day one. Fracture day one, no pain at all. 78 year old, not very active. No, I left it at such. I mean, he never had pain ever. Uh, he just said he just had a fracture. And he WhatsApped me the number, uh, his X-ray, and he said. 
because it's all impacted. Yeah, it's all it's all worth. There are so many patients, no? No, but no, but so many patients come with very minimal pain and such type of X-rays. Old patients. Uh, could be old, yeah, actually. Basically, no. <laughs> it's not enlarge, enlarge. Yeah. Anatomical neck, you just, just slide it down. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, I left but it. But you off it. Left it like that. It is displaced, but 78 year old. What are we gonna achieve? So this is the patient. This is three months. So 90 degrees. This is the right one. Hmm. But he has no stress. He is very very thankful. I think he's a very happy guy. No no surgery. He was very happy. No surgery. And this actually uh, this actually correlates uh, in this paper you're talking of. Four part fractures non operative is equal to hemi replacement. Pain and pain scores, constant scores are all the same. Range of movement in very elderly patients, you cannot get more than 90. Uh, with, even with hemi. This is the average forward flexion which they got. Okay. So, uh, and the quality of life was better with hemi. That I didn't put in, but that's correct. So, this is definitely there. So, uh, if we are going to operate, the burden of proof lies on us to prove that surgery couldn't have been the better option. That's for us to prove that if we had conserved, it couldn't have been better. That's, 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 as a surgeon, we owe it to the people, I think. Thank you.